Hi everyone, welcome to episode number five of our current season of Jan's Opening Clinic, the show where I do my very best to answer Chess24 Premium users' opening questions so I don't match, at least hopefully. We all learn something along the way. If you want to ask me a question in the current or one of the next seasons, Go Premium on Chess24 also gives you access to all the video series, allows you to challenge me and much stronger players in Banter Blitz, all the good stuff. With my voucher code Yanistan, you get 40% off. All right, let's jump into the action. We have a question by Ilya Joker, International Master, Clinic Regular, who's saying, Hi Jan, it's been a long time. I'm glad to see that my favorite show is back on YouTube. There have to be better shows on YouTube. Today my question is about the line 1e4, c5, 2 knight, c3, d6, 3 bishop, b5 check. It's quite a rare one, but seems to be very tricky to handle for black. What would be your recommendation against this line for black? And regards Ilya, let us have a look. I've seen this line around. I think Grishuk had games with both colors. And I noticed it's not, it's not that simple indeed. E4, C5, white goes knight C3. The more common way to do this is knight F3 and after D6, bishop B5 check. And black has a choice between bishop D7 and knight to D7. Black goes bishop D7, takes, takes. Then white usually puts a pawn on C4, follows up with D4. Or in some lines, C3 and D4 is also an option. These things are, of course, no longer possible after knight C3, D6, bishop B5 check. But white has some pluses here as well, namely that his f-pawn is still mobile. And if black plays knight d7 here, then it looks like plans involving f4 are somewhat annoying. Maybe not directly, because after f4, black has a6 and b5. But my computer, for example, gives a4 here, a6, bishop e2, and then wants to follow up with f4, when this knight on d7 looks really misplaced, it would so much rather be on c6. So bishop d7 seems like a better choice than knight d7. Now white usually takes, the queen recaptures, and there is a crossroads. Plans with f4 here don't seem that challenging. Black just gets a very natural setup with knight to c6, knight to f3, pawn to g6, and then bishop to g7. I couldn't really see anything too troublesome. Let's say d3 in castles. Black goes e6, intending to put the other knight here. And just has a sound position. Isipiano, I think, won a game here against Wesley So with some very direct stuff, some f5. But computer just says take, and if e f knight e7, and black's doing well. So nothing to be too concerned about. The plan that they have been playing here is also somewhat surprising at first sight, but it makes sense. You go pawn to d4 without preparing it with knight f3, but directly willing to lose a tempo with the queen. Because black takes and goes knight to c6, but the queen drops back to d3. And now white just wants a sort of slow build up with knight f3, short castles. And then, depending on what black does, the knight goes to the middle or the bishop comes out. And yeah, it's not that trivial. Computer doesn't mind e6 here. It just looks so strange to me with this bishop being able to come here to weaken this pawn. So I wasn't a big fan. And in practice, pawn to g6 is also usually played, which does look sounder. Once again, going for the fianchetto. Knight to f3, bishop to g7, short castles, knight to f6. And now, apparently, the critical plan for white is the very direct knight to d5. So let's have a look at that, and then we can briefly look at alternatives after. But this seems to be the main line, knight d5, black castles. White goes bishop to g5, threatening to take, so black has to do something. And here, black has a choice depending on his appetite for risk. I think the clean, cleanest equalizer is to just take. This is somewhat dangerous structurally, because after e takes d with his backward pawn, it looks at first sight like white could be better. But I've checked a bit, and I didn't see any particular troubles. Move by move. Black goes knight e5, forcing the exchange of these knights. Knight takes, bishop takes. And here what's important is that black can always go bishop to f6. When this exchange really doesn't trouble him, that structure will just be fine. And that seems to be 
a key defensive move after which I couldn't really find anything. Rook a1 is what they've been trying to do. Black goes rook f8, just covering this pawn, hinting at taking him, not really, really wants to. But white goes c3, let's say. Now black drops back, bishop f6. And this structure, as mentioned, we're not afraid of. So white has usually tried pawn to h4 here, at least grabbing some more space if these bishops get exchanged. But after takes, takes, now black can solve the problem of his backward e-pawn with pawn to e5. And it just seems like it's too little for white. D takes e, rook takes e6. Black does have this weakness, but it's sort of cancelled out by other stuff. So I do think that this is just equal and the solid way to equalize. But of course, there are not a lot of winning chances here. Playing like this might not be everybody's cup of tea. So if we go back, the seven knight takes d5. There are a bunch of alternatives that have all been played, like knight g4, knight h5. And I kind of liked the look of knight e8 as well. Very passive at first sight, but it prepares maybe e6 followed by f5. It can lead to a much messier game. The best move here is rook a d1, ignoring this pawn. After which things could heat up very quickly. Like the line I was looking at is pawn to e6, knight goes back to e3, pawn to h6, important to throw this in, bishop to h4, and pawn to f5 with some serious mess. e takes f, g takes f, white tries to attack these pawns, knight c4. I don't know, it's the computer's first line. It does look a little random, but computer didn't mind it. Queen f7, knight takes d6, knight takes d6, queen takes d6, e5. Black is a pawn down, but he has nice coordination. Rook a8 is coming, and these pawns have quite some potential. Like c3, rook a8, and if you let a strong engine run here, it will say it's fine. So that's a much riskier approach. The equalizer is knight takes d5, as far as I can tell. Hope that answers the question. Yeah, it's a surprisingly decent system. Maybe it lost some of its surprise value but it's been, because it's been played by good players, but not bad for white at all. Instead of knight d5, he can play some slower moves here as well, but they didn't look very challenging. Like setups with h3, castles, rook d1. Blacks seem to have a choice. Usually in practice, they played rook d8. Computer says you don't need rook d8, you can go rook c8. And after e5, which seems like the critical move, go knight e8. And once again, we were getting some somewhat dry, but very solid positions, like bishop f4, queen e6, takes, 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 pin. Something like this, which, which looks reasonably equal as well, even d5, and queen e7. So yeah, it's not a bad system, but black shouldn't be too worried about it either. I can accept that people have started trying it with the white pieces though. Thanks for the question. Ilya Joker. What's next? Petrogradsky is saying, what is black's best option after e4, c6, caro cup, knight f3, d5, knight c3, d takes e4, knight takes e4, knight f6, queen e2, knight takes e4, queen takes e4, queen d5, or queen a5, followed by bishop f5. I don't like either, to be honest, but let us go there. So e4, c6, knight c3, d5, knight f3. System I've always had some sympathy for. Of course, black can go bishop g4 here, and after h3, the h4 would be a bit much. After h3, take. But this d takes e4, knight takes e4, knight f6 is a more direct way to play, especially with the popularity of all these knight f6, knight takes f6, ef lines. It's very natural, part of black's repertoire as well. And the critical try here, somewhat surprisingly, is not to take, but to play this move queen to e2, hoping for knight bd7, knight d6. So don't blunder that. Black takes. White takes, and the question was, 
which one I prefer, queen a5 or queen d5. I don't like either, as mentioned. After queen d5, the queen goes away. The main line is queen h4, but even queen f4, but even queen h4 looked a bit unpleasant after what they play. They try to exchange queens here by force. Queen e6, but should be two, queen g4. Now white goes queen g3, arguing that if they get exchanged, at least let's get the h-pawn to g3. Because h-pawns, they only control one square. While if this guy becomes a g-pawn, he controls two squares. And this didn't look that pleasant for black, surprisingly. Or maybe not surprisingly. It looked like white had a little something. So I didn't love it. Also, not obsessed with this other line. Queen f4, queen f5, queen e3. Where grabbing the pawn looked very, very risky. And exchanging queens here with queen e6. Once again, computer does seem happy with white. Even a random move that's never played, like a4. My engine was giving some advantage. They usually play b3. Yeah, I don't like these endgames that much. Once again, in order to exchange queens, black has to make a concession. Improving white's pawn structure a bit. So queen a5 is an alternative, preparing bishop f5. But first of all, I think if white goes queen f4, here the move is still queen f5, right? Which would transpose to what we just saw with queen e3. Secondly, this dumb-looking move, b4, might also not be so stupid. If queen d5, queen to e3, intending to play c4, once again, I was seeing some numbers on my screen that I didn't like too much. So, I'll tell you the system that I do like instead. It's the move knight to d7 here, which has been becoming a bit more popular recently, I've seen. Some German players like Bluebaum and Donchenko play it. Plan is just to put the knight here, and then ideally get the bishop out. White has two choices. He can play d4, after which black goes knight of six. I think there was a game. Nakamura, Caruana, probably blitz game or rapid game. But this happened, which looks normal. Queen d2, bishop to f5. Black seems to have a fairly sound Karakam position. Game bishop d3 was played, takes an e6. But hard to believe this is anything special for white. c4 is also legal when the knight goes back. I think black is sound. The more popular move here, also the more cunning one, is bishop to c4. Targeting this guy, black goes knight to f6, and here white has this sufficient suk, knight to e5, threatening checkmate, forcing black to go e6, after which this bishop can no longer go out, but it's still fine for black. e6, queen e2. Here black was switching to some very direct play. What can I say? It, it works. Pawn to b5. Now that the bishop can no longer go out here, wants to find a home here. And the tactics just seem to be working for black reasonably well. White cannot take, because after queen c7 takes. This looks menacing, but it turns out that white is losing material. a6 is important, so the bishop has to go to an uncovered square. Bishop a4, then bishop d7. This pin will cost a piece. So white should not take directly. This continues, or bishop d3 was also possible, but then computers are saying after a6, black is seriously better. So the most challenging way to play seems to be bishop to d3. Looks strange, but if bishop b3, then queen to c7, black is just solid. Bishop goes to d6, short castle, so nothing to worry about. There was some weird stuff here, d4, bishop, d6, castles, castles, computers give a4, and now a strong engine gives c5 here as the best move, which looks looks very aggressive, but just seemed to work well. Mm. So what white should try is bishop to d3, keeping these knight takes c6 ideas alive. And once again, black plays very directly. Queen to c7, not committing the bishop yet. Bishop b7 is legal. Then white seemed to be somewhat better after a4, b3, bishop b2. 
So queen to c7. Once again, white should try pawn to a4. Black goes bishop to d6. I understand this is very move by move, but I do think that it's, it's the fix. Knight takes c6. Tactics. Now black cannot take because the queen would drop. So what black does here is pawn to b4. Don't ask me why. It's one of those. It works. And next move would be short castles. Trick line is knight to d4, threatening knight b5. Black stops knight b5 by going a6. Now white plays slowly. Black, although he's a pawn down, has a very serious initiative with castles and bishop to b7. So white has to keep the candle burning. Is that an expression? Go knight f5, target these guys. The which black has a choice, but trying to click my way home, the most direct seem to be bishop to e5. Check, king f8, knight h5, takes, takes, bishop to b7. With a mess, black's what, two pawns down? King is on f8, the activity is enough to keep the balance. The main move here is bishop e2 for whatever reason. The castles then rook to g8, takes this, f3, and f5, intending like rook g6, queen g7. And black gets to have all the fun because this part of the board is not very developed for black. For white. So the main move was this and here. One can keep clicking, apparently. My computer says rook to d8 is a good move. Then followed up with rook g8. This is very, a very computer solution, of course, but it does work nicely if you give them a bit of time. The good old zero zero will appear on the screen. See, there it is. <laughs> Instead of bishop e5, there's also bishop to b7, which is a more long-term way to play, sacrificing a pawn, arguing black has enough compensation, castles and h5, where I wasn't sure if it, how happy I, black should be with this position. But computers, if they're given time, also don't think it's too horrible. Queen e3, rook d8, f3, and some b3 move. And apparently black has enough compensation. So, I understand this is very move by move and maybe not the solid system you were looking for, but I do think that currently it's in good shape and knight d7 followed by knight f6 is the right way to play in this position. Queen d5 or queen a5. I wasn't a very big fan of. Hope that helped a bit. Moving on. Anuel, Anuel is saying, Hi Jan, what is the best way to play against the color system? Oof. Always easier if you give me moves or some more information, like I'm a King's Indian player, what do I do against Knight F3, E3, or I'm a Queen's Gambit player? Because I'm never sure what is meant by the color system. I understand it's D4, Knight F3, E3, C3, but so much depends on like what black wants to do against normal openings. Therefore, it's always easier if you give me some more information or ideally some moves. Anyway, d4, knight f6, knight to f3. I will play d5. And if they go e3, I will play c5, just a reversed queen's gambit. And the color system, I guess, here will be pawn to c3. If white commits to c3, I think a very good setup for black here is to play knight bd7. And the plan, the plan is g6, bishop g7, short castles. Take it from there. Generally, what white wants to do is go knight bd2, bishop d3, castles, and then play e4 or dc5, followed by e4 under good circumstances. But with, against this knight on d7 and the plan with g6, I don't think that works very well for white. Castles, castles, and frankly, black already seems to be more comfortable. This is a very passive setup that doesn't work very well 
against this arrangement of pieces. Black goes b6, bishop b7 next. And then he can think about queen c7, e5 potentially. While white attempts to break in the middle only lead to him having a slightly worse position. Let's say e4, takes, takes. Knight takes, bishop takes, c takes, d. And knight d4 here. Black has many decent options. Queen c7, e5, a6. Black is just doing very well. Because white lost some time as well. And if they play some color move like rook e1, b6 just looks fine once again after e4. Everything gets taken. The bishop comes here. So I think that's an excellent system in this very move order. But once again, I'm not sure what lines you are trying to play. White could mix it a little with the move order here. Go knight bd2 first, after which this knight d7 is a little more suspect because white could still go c4 or something. But once the knight commits to d2, black has many other good options. One, for example, would be knight to c6 and after c3 to take here and bring the bishop out. This seems highly reliable as well. Or another one. If white goes bishop b5, I'm not sure this is still a color system. But after bishop b5 with this pin, now it makes sense to keep our bishop home. Go e6, bishop d7. Once again, nothing to really worry about. The pieces will come out. Bishop d6, castles. This bishop is a bit out of place against the seven. So that's how I would do it. Of course, if you're, let's say, a King's Indian player, things might be a little different. But the good news is, should white go for this? Which... I always thought it was a color system once again. Not sure what the exact definition is. That the plan we just saw still seems to work nicely. Go d5, say castles, knight b7, then play c5, and black is just in good shape. Here, here, here. I think this is the most effective setup against what I consider to be the college system. Hope that helped. Next time, give me a little more information or moves because, as usual, everything depends on what you want to play with black as your main repertoire. And then you have to adjust to these color setups around it. What else is there? Brian Biggs is saying, I'm very glad to see that the clinic is coming back. What is the current thinking on the Pulgayevsky version of the Nidorf? You mean bishop g5, e6, f4, b5, yeah? I know that has been refuted and then resurrected many times. You know more than me there. I haven't followed it very much. Is there any way for black to hold against best play for white? I don't know. I would guess it's borderline, which is why black players don't really do it anymore. Anyway, let's put it on the board, e4. Sorry, we need a board. Here we are. e4, c5, knight of 3, d6, d4, c takes d, knight takes d4. Knight f6, knight to c3, a6, the knight orf, bishop g5, the most aggressive way to play. Pawn to e6, pawn to f4, and the Polgayevsky is pawn to b5, as far as I know. Allowing white to push e5, which is brazen. It's based on a little tactical trick, but it hasn't been very popular because it's dangerous move by move. Very, very dangerous. I'm not sure if black holds with objectively best play. I've clicked around a bit. I can show you what computers seem to think the main lines are. E5, D, E, F, E. With this pin, the trick black has here is queen to C7. And after E takes F, go queen E5 check. The problem is black is losing a lot of time with his queen early in the opening. And it's, it's dangerous. 
There should be two queen takes g5, short castles. This seems to be the established main line. And already black has to start making more or less only moves according to the computer to stay in the game. Best move seems to be rook a7, removing this rook from the diagonal and keeping an eye on f7, maybe intending to go rook d7. And yeah, white keeps making the forcing moves, queen to d3, keeping an eye on this square, preparing to bring the rook. Rook d7 is best, knight to e4, queen to e5. All of this has been has been played plenty, and I think the alternatives are worse for black. So this is still what's what's supposed to happen. But of course, as a bluff, if you don't expect white to know or play all these things, then there is some some surprise value there. Um, it is risky. Queen c7, queen e3. I guess this is sort of the starting position, although. We've made a bunch of random moves, but in computer lingo, it seems like this is the route that white should go. Here, black has a choice. He could go for an end game with queen a7. When long term, he might be doing well with the two bishops and the extra pawn in the center, but he is quite undeveloped, and white has more than one way to ask some questions here. My computer liked a4 best. They've also played knight f3, 5 and any other move you could think of. But a4 seemed quite challenging. Problem is always this inclusion. If black goes b4, try to keep things closed, heavily favors white. He would now go knight e5. The black position seems to be collapsing. So black after a4 has to take here. Knight takes king e7, knight h5, and... He's under pressure. You could look at different moves here. Bishop h6, rook c7. But computer is always around plus one for white and trying to hang in there. But barely managing. The main line is b takes a, knight g5, f5, bishop c4, targeting this guy. And yeah. If both sides have access to a computer or a correspondence chess or just prepared this heavily before the game, then black faces, faces a very long, very unpleasant struggle for surviving. I can show you more moves if you just keep clicking. Rook c7 takes, takes, rook e1. Targeting this, rook e6, knight f4. White regains the piece. Rook c2, for whatever reason, best move. Now there's a choice between rook a4 and taking on e6. In all cases, yeah, it's around plus one. And if black survives in the end or loses, um, it's very close. I haven't tried to find a clean win here or a clean draw. But it's it's somewhere in between, like these types of positions. Well, it's just an exercise in pushing the button. But black is fighting for survival in all the lines. This, for example is a computer mainline. Black still pawn up. That's the good news. We're in move 40. Okay. Forcing stuff. The bad news is computer still, still says plus one for white with the weak black pawns and the king here. You could continue analyzing here or one of the other lines. But basically, there are too many lines where it's like plus one. And black is trying to survive move by move for this to be any fun. Even in what we just looked at after rook c2, white goes rook takes a4. Black is also seriously suffering. King d7 and rook d1 or knight takes e6. It's, it's rough. There was a correspondence game where this was played which also looked unpleasant. King c8, knight takes e6, knight c6, rook d5. I mean, it's all living on the edge. Once again, theoretically speaking, if you can find enough surprise value there, I mean, knock yourself out. And typically also players that play such lines, there are big specialists in all these lines. But if white is prepared, it does look like 
a lot of suffering. So somehow pushing the button, one reached this position. And here, so queen a7, black could also try to keep the queens on the board. But once again, it looked very, very scary. Even if white plays, quote unquote, normally here, he's a bit better. c3 takes, 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 and takes. Black king is still a little shaky. The most challenging, once again, seemed to be pawn to a4, trying to open things up here or forcing black to go b4, to which the suffering continues. b4, now white was doing king h1, just to avoid any unpleasantness on this diagonal. Bishop takes e4, this swish and soup, typical sequence here. Bishop takes g7, queen takes e4. And yeah, it's. Computers are so strong nowadays, they will ask questions here. With this king being weak, bishop c3, knight g5. And there's still troubles. So the answer is I don't know if it's mathematically losing or tenable. It's certainly no fun for black if white is an engine or knows his stuff. So I guess it's with good reason. We never see it at the top level where everybody plays queen b6 or h6 followed by queen b6 with the rare knight bd7 or bishop e7 sprinkled in there, but it's more or less died out with one or two exceptions as a surprise at the highest levels. It's just too risky for black and doesn't seem to work very well if, yeah. There is a way to prove a white win. I'm not sure. I haven't spent enough time, but there are many ways to prove a white advantage. So it's should be used as a surprise weapon if you want to use it. But it's it's, it's too risky. It's also understandably, it's not that logical to move the queen around in an open position that often. A white can't try to counter. So that I think is the the status. It could. No, I don't think it's it's gonna change because there are too many lines where white puts pressure. And yeah, I, I don't think the Polgayevsky variation is in for a comeback anytime soon. But still, if you think it's fun to analyze, and you'll probably have an advantage in knowledge should these lines happen, then yeah. It's the usual trade-off, surprise value versus soundness. The positions do look fun, at least. Not for black, if white knows, but in general they look fun. All right, let's get to the next question by Benedict2003. Saying, hey, Jan, I'm currently wondering what to do in the Nimzo after d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4, queen c2, castles a3, bishop takes c3, queen takes c3. I've heard that the most fashionable 65 could lead to a worse but holdable endgame, which I wouldn't be thrilled about. Sources said, uh -huh. I've already had some very bad experiences with 6b5, and if possible, I'd like to avoid the main line. Not all the moves can be main lines. d5 fashionable, b6 main line. Okay, I'll... I think that's that's a reasonable for practical reasons. So you think 6d6 is worth checking out? Is it likely to lead to many imbalances or is it more of a solid equalizer? Thanks for your help and much love. Let us find Le Chessbot. So d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4, queen c2, castles. First of all, gotta be aware of e4 here. It's it's an annoying little memory check. But the question was about a3, takes, takes. And Benedict had heard that this leads to a worse but tenable endgame. I'm not sure how and where. And the main move used to be bishop g5 here. But now... This move of pawn to c5, sacrificing a pawn, seems to be all the rage, which certainly doesn't lead to worse 
tenable endgames. It leads to a mess, but Confuse is quite like this. D takes C, D4. Queen goes somewhere, F3 or G3. Um, and yeah, once again, a lot of clicking here. But it seems like black is doing doing all right. Knight BD7. And up to Queen G3. You also went Knight BD7. Which, yeah, it's a huge mess. It doesn't look that great for black. But if you analyze a bit with the comp, who's never in a hurry, you probably like the results. This is a recent game by Rapport um, 92 E4. And looks like White is already under some pressure. So I'm not saying C5 is winning or anything, but it's a, a new way to try to force the issue. Serve the old D C4, which I guess you meant these lines with the slightly worse endgame. That could also be debated, but yeah, here white at the very least didn't risk very much and was trying to put some pressure. Although last time I checked, this was also holding up nicely for black. After d5, there's also knight f3. When now c5 is less good, so usually they take or like Greece should start with b6. Both interesting. Takes, takes, queen c4, b6, bishop g5. Um, but once again, I don't think there are any worse endgames here. Bishop a6 is the main move. Bishop b7 is also considered to be okay. Grishuk recently tried c5, which was interesting. But yeah, here you can get some more forcing stuff, like, like this line. This is an old line, rook d1, queen b6. But it seems to be fine for black. Anyway, I do understand not wanting to play d5 as it is a bit forcing and yeah white knows his stuff winning chances will be limited yeah b5 i also spent some time looking at it. i don't think it works very well and b6 you didn't want so question was about d6 yeah it's not an attempt to equalize it's an attempt to play for win and mix it like the attempt to equalize is d5 grabbing more space in the center here white has the two bishops and black is not committing to any direct contact, simplifying or anything like that. So it's certainly not an attempt to go for try equality, but as a means to spice it up or to play for a win with black, I I don't mind it. I can't say I've studied it in great detail, but some strong players like Caruana have recently dabbled here and found some sharp ideas. So. It's, yeah, for me, it's more of a trying to beat weaker opponents slash surprise weapon. White has many different tries, but nothing that seems to be too troublesome. With white, I, I wanted to play f3 here in the old days when I played more of this. I think they usually go c5, d takes c, d takes c, and bishop f4, intending to play rook d1 in some positions like this. This was a recent game. Somebody against somebody. I always thought should be a little more pleasant for white. But still a mess. The computer goes e5 here. And the drama continues. Takes, takes, queen e5, queen a5. So these things can still spice up very quickly. And I'm not sure f3. I haven't seen many people do it recently. Recently, that's still the big one. Bishop to g5 is, of course, always logical. Pinning. And here, Caruana, he's done some strange stuff or some interesting stuff. I don't know. He goes rook to e8. The normal plan, quote unquote, would be knight bd7, b6, bishop b7. But then you end up playing the old main lines where white has many choices knight f3, knight d2, f3, e3, knight e2. Which, yeah, there's some suffering for black involved there. <laughs> So this rook e8, this was Karana's attempt intending to go for a quick e5. I haven't looked at it in great detail yet, but if Fabi does something, it's worth paying attention. He wants to go h6 and e5 and still keep the option to maybe bring the bishop here, the knight here. It's not winning, but it leads to... Well, nothing's winning with black. But it leads to some non-standard complex positions, which I guess is what you're looking for. 
That's one of the E5s I noticed. Another one is if white goes knight F3. Karana was also going rook E8. Here looks even stranger. But once again, he's ready to mix it up very quickly after bishop G5, H6, bishop H4. He had a game where he went G5, bishop G3, and E5. Which you don't do without computer assistance. But it seemed to, to more or less work. D takes E, knight E4. And there will be a mess very, very quickly. Queen E3, pawn to F5. These top players, they find ways to spice it up. I think the game was something like Long Castles, Knight E4, Queen E1. But here, Black is already in good shape. According to my computer, what uh, Queen E7 with an ongoing mess. So there seem to be attempts to make these lines weirder with Rook E8 and E5. That yeah, I'm I'm not sure they will be turning out to be equalizers at the end, but that's not really the intention. They they will turn out to try to get a more complex fight. Of course, white has many setups. He can go g3 here, to which I guess black would switch to play him with knight c6 and e5. And once again, white might be better here, but you get a position full of fight. Instead of knight c6, if you dislike this, you could also switch back to b6, which should be seven plans. Now that white is committed to g3, then play knight bd7. So, yeah, I think the equalizer for people that like to click is pawn to d5. And here one can probably click one's way home to equality, which is also why it's so popular at the highest levels. But in order to spice it up a little bit, d6 does look interesting. In particular with, I just saw this when I was checking the question, with these new attempts to go rook e8 and for a very quick e5 that I wasn't aware of. White, of course, has a lot of options. White can always play whatever. Knight f3, rook e8, e3 as well. But nothing nothing seemed to be too scary to discourage black from at least trying this once or twice. So d6, yeah, looked more, more interesting than I thought, frankly. I guess f3 remains a question if you're comfortable playing these positions. Hmm. It's it's a trickier move than I thought, but yeah, it's not a way to try to equalize. It's a way to try to mix it. So good luck on your D6 adventures. Check what Fabi is doing there. He will have some ideas. Tends to have. There was that. Well, we have Dr. Sausage. Hey, Jan, love to get clinical. Also love your chessable E4, E5 course. Thank you. Check it out. It's a complete repertoire. Against one E4. Though almost nobody plays the marshal, the knight f3, knight c6, three bishops c4, knight f6, knight g5 lines have been lots of fun. But playing only online blitz, the d3 world of Spatalians, Italish, is most of what I get. And I'm too lazy to learn how to properly equalize, since the piece shuffling feels easier for white. All right. So the question, what are your thoughts on a blitz-specific repertoire for black versus e4. For those who want a medium spicy game, e.g. versus d4, I'm happy with Semislav Cambridge Springs, Shanklin style. I know you love fluffy, non concrete questions, so here you go. The Taimanov has been nice against the slow players, but there just seem to be lots of ways to put it under pressure. Help us, Jan. What should we do? Well, I did do a complete e4, e5 course, but you're saying you're too lazy to learn how to equalize there. So what else can I do? Let's let's open a board. Um, and yeah, I do understand the, the notion 
that yeah if you play e4 e5 even if you looked at all the sharp fun lines bishop c4 knight f6 knight g5 and the marshal that most of the time and trust me i'm also struggling with this you get white players playing d3 and then they're ready to pre-move and i don't know short castles c3 rook e1 knight bd2 knight f1 h3 and only then have a look around, which yeah can be a little frustrating. I think putting in some work there, or at least I'm still doing it, to find ways to challenge white and equalize is still worth it. Like yeah, I, I always dabble in these d5 systems just to change the structure a bit. For example, here, but of course there is a lot of positions where you don't get immediate action, but white does get the slightly more pleasant of an equal position because as you say it is somewhat easier to maneuver with white but the problem of the question is it's the usual question hi i would like a system against one e4 or one d4 although there the camera spring seems to do the trick and um, where i'm solid they can't put me under pressure but i have decent winning chances and I don't want to learn too much. And that's that's a tough one. It's always a compromise between soundness, where if you want soundness, you'll be doing very well in the Spanish Italians or or the Berlins or the Petrovs. Um, but yeah, you might not get so many winning chances in some of the lines, or you might have to study some in some of the others. And um, if you want... A one size fits all. You can play g6, bishop g7, d6, a6 every game. There you sacrifice some soundness because you give up the center and you'll be worse. And then you can look for compromises like the Taimanov. I don't wanna I don't want beef with the Taimanov community. It's it's a reasonable opening as far as I know. But yeah, where it's medium spicy, but of course white has a million. Attempts in this position, g3, g4, bishop e3, bishop e2, bishop e3, queen f3, bishop e3, queen d2, pawn to f4. So it's not like you know, things will always be, be easy here, but it does look, from what you described, like a sensible choice down the middle of the river. Of course, the knight off is a good opening, but... There's also some work and many different structures to be done there. But the knight or long term, I think if you don't like e4, e5 because of the Italians, that's the one that will pay the most dividends. Then again, I preach that, but I don't do it because it's also too much work for me trying to figure out how to play the knight or. Other than that, well, I, I'm sure you know all the options, like the Karaka is another one where. You might get a slightly more complex structure than in e4, e5, but white also has way more tries to play for an advantage and to go for different structures with the d4, d5, e5 systems with taking here, followed by bishop d3, with knight f3, d5, d3, or knight f3, d5, knight c3, which we had earlier. So there, there's no one solution. And the reality is also white is a little better in chess because he does start so it really depends on your preferences and your appetite. Obviously, I'm mainly an advocate of e5, knight, c6. I just think it's the best way to play. And I do think that even in these slow Spanish-Italian positions, there is enough room for error. But I'm not going to lie. I do sometimes hate myself too when I'm facing the next d3 game against a lower-rated opponent where I can already see how ready they are to pre-move these stand-up plans. And they're not so easy to put under pressure. Like, neutralize is different. But there is no... No golden goose that will allow you, with no study, to get a sound yet dynamic position. So, yeah. If you don't like E4, E5, I would say Taimanov, Karokan, or Nidorf are probably the the openings out there for you but as i said 
No gorące. All right, shall we do one more? Let's do one last question. Maybe that's the system for Dr. Sausage. Sacho is saying, hey Jan, what do you think about the line e4, c5, knife 3, e6, d4, cd, knight d4, knife 6, knight c3, knight c6, knight db5, bishop c5. This line scores heavily in both classical chess and online chess and seems to be surprisingly sound according to the engines. This line has been recommended in 2017 by former German champion Matthias Walz on his blog. There you go. Ahead of his times. Thanks a lot. And... All right, let's get bored. Hmm. So e4, c5, how do we do this? I guess e6, d4, cd, knight d4, knight f6, knight c3, knight c6. I'm sorry, here is a chessboard. Let's, let's repeat. So e4, c5, f3, e6, d4, takes, takes, knight f6, knight c3, knight c6. For starters, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of this, but most strong players nowadays play knight takes c6. Yeah, they don't go knight db5. I don't think it's because they're afraid of bishop c5, but because they're worried about this Reshnikov. So, of course, you have to factor factor this in and you need a line here which yeah is ongoing theoretical debates i've spent some time here it's i think black holes but it is it is incredibly complex all these super long lines which um they're trying to to defend how does it even go bishop a6 king f3 and no, i think it's supposed to go f5 directly right <laughs> Knight f6. The alternatives like Rapport recently played bishop b7 here and so on. But no, none of these ever struck me as a as a picnic or as a way to avoid theory. And it seems like this is much more popular now than knight db5. So that'd be my first warning. White well, can also play a3 or some move like that. But those I guess we shouldn't be so afraid of. Now let's look at the line in question. Knight db5. Yeah. As I mentioned, I think this is not as popular at the top levels as people just think transposing to the Sveshnikov here with a6, b5, that in these positions um, research has been a bit exhausted and black is doing well, which also you can see from the popularity of three bishop b5 or in the Sveshnikov. Going knight d5 here, which has become a more critical attempt, arguably, than bishop g5. All right. Back to the question. Knight f6, knight c3, knight c6, knight db5, and bishop c5. Yeah, I don't know. I think it has decent surprise value. It's, it's probably not losing, but not fully equalizing either um the best way for white to play seems to be bishop f4 i haven't spent much time looking at knight d6 i guess this is what black is hoping for i'm not sure how these positions are frankly but the best way to play seems to be bishop f4 short castles bishop c7 queen e7 bishop d6 takes queen takes and yeah we thought black must suffer a little bit here but of course, one can continue checking. Black has a choice between this end game, which I guess is a bit unpleasant with these weak squares here. And after f5, white can go e5. And yeah, this looks worse for black. So what I usually do is queen back to d8. And now it's white who faces a choice. I would guess the most critical try is long castles a6 knight d4 we have seen some games with queen b6 but that's probably just bad takes and f3 and the computers are very excited about white's chances for example knight e8 queen d4 
takes, takes, d5, rook, b4. And black wasn't quite in time to, to hold this endgame. Yeah, you could go queen d4, queen c7. That's not going to be a picnic either. So my computer won knight e7 here. And then it was giving some, some computerish lines like h4, which I guess makes sense. Okay, so knight ever wants to come here. b5, and now it said a3 was a bit better. Or knight to b3. With, yeah, I don't know. It gives like 0 or 50. It's certainly not hopeless for black. But it also doesn't look like a dream position. There was also h5 here. I'm not sure just yet. Going off first impressions. So I would guess that's the most critical try objectively. The more solid try is, well, it looks weird, but the more solid try is knight to c7 here, just stopping knight to e8. White goes rook b8, and black goes rook b8, and white just goes bishop e2, intending to castle kingside. Um, this also continues here. The best move was b5, trying to generate some action. White goes e5, forcing knight to e8. Knight takes, rook takes, short castles. And once again, it's on the verge of problems, but black can probably hang in there. Still, you, you do choose white or in computer lingo. It's, yeah, like 040-ish. Knight e4, bishop b7, bishop d3. Black has alternatives here, but this was the first line of my reasonably strong stockfish bishop a8, queen c5, other moves. White girls play b3, queen b6. We're going for this type of endgame, where, yeah, why is a little better, but I'm sure if you keep checking this, you can probably survive. It doesn't look like black has committed any crimes that should mean he's in trouble. But it also doesn't look that easy. Like, I do, do agree. I've seen the scores look decent. Black was scoring reasonably well here with bishop c5. I guess most of it is due to a bit of a surprise factor, which, yeah, is a thing. Like, if you can surprise people there and know more than your opponent, that sometimes is worth sacrificing a little bit in soundness. I haven't checked long enough if black is in real trouble in these two lines I mentioned, but they did look better for white without a lot of risk. So I've never been too tempted by this line or by bishop b4 here. Um, but yeah, there, it's a decent surprise weapon, I would say. The bigger turn for me would be that you also have to maintain a repertoire here, which most white players, or I'm not sure if it's true at any level, but at the top level, at the very least, most white players go for this, and this was always oof, so much work just for survival. Because here, yeah, in theoretically speaking, I think there's nothing wrong with d6 and playing the good old Sveshnikov. Well, bishop c5, bishop f4, yeah. White does have some pressure in the lines I've shown, but if you keep checking them, I do not think it's a hopeless endeavor. So the usual, the usual trade-off. You trade off some some soundness for some surprise value, which yeah, is often the case. I hope that answered the question, and maybe also Doctor Sausage's question. Maybe you guys can can team up in six bishop c five. Thanks, Sacho, for the question, and we'll wrap it up here. See you, I guess, in the. Season finale, the exciting season finale. Um, in the next show, thanks for watching. Go premium on Chess24 to ask a question. In these with the code Yanistan, you get 40% off. That's it. See you next show.